So now let's talk about some common programming constructs that, um, that we use in our programs, and let's show how we can represent them in RISC-V assembly language. So common constructs include conditional statements, if and if else statements, and loops, while and for loops. For the if statement, here's a, a high level code construct or a C code shown in C, very similar, if not exactly the same, in other high level languages. If I is equal to J, we use double equals. If I equals equals J, then F equals G plus H. So this line of code right here will only execute if this condition is true. And then it continues on. In this case, the next statement is that and so forth. So we can pick, uh, we've, you know, first pick some uh, registers to hold our variables. So let's say S0 through S2 hold F, G, and H, and S3 through S4 hold I and J. And now we just go about translating our code. And it's tempting to want to put a branch if equal here because we see, oh, equals equals. But actually we want to do the opposite. We want to do branch if not equal if it's not equal, we want to skip over or branch past the next line. And so we use a branch if not equal on i and j. So i is an s3, j is an s4. And we say if it's not equal, I want to branch past the next instruction or perhaps groups of instructions and go somewhere else. So we'll put this um, L1 here. And if they are equal, that branch won't be taken, and we can just execute the next line of code, which will be f equals g plus h, or add f is in s0, g plus h. Okay, and then if, you know, that will, even if it executes that, it continues doing the next line of code. And so that line of code is f equals f minus i, or subtract f is in s0 equals f minus i, which is in s3. And here, nicely written. So again, this is kind of odd and you know unexpected, but the high-level code does, or the assembly code does the opposite of what the high-level code does. This is checking equality in the high-level code. And in the assembly code, we're checking inequality or not equal. Now let's suppose we um, change this code so that it said, if i equals equals j, do that else. So we had an else statement here. So we only perform that if this isn't true. We had else than this. So how would we change this? Well, this part looks good, right? The branch not equal will still go here. Um, we want that to happen, right? If it's if it's not equal, we want the else uh, statement or statements to be performed. But what about this? If, if we leave this as is, it'll just fall through and then do the, the statement that's in the else block as well. And so we have to actually jump past that else block of code Right here now we're doing a slightly different code. We're doing an if else statement. And we'll jump past that else statement or could be statements. We're gonna, after we do the if block of code, jump past the else block. And here this is shown um, written more nicely. And so the only difference is this jumping past code so now we don't want to execute it after um, after it falls out of the if block we want to jump past it and here's more code down here while loops um, repeatedly execute a block of code until a condition is not met so while this condition is met it's going to keep executing this block of code and so here's some high level code that determines the power of x such that x equals 128. So here's power equals one and um, x equals zero, some initialization. 
we're going to say, oh, the first iteration through, this is iteration one, checks and says power, well, power is not equal to 128. Let's see, power is one. Yep, definitely not equal to 128. Then it does, well, power, which is one, um, power equals the current value of power, which is one, times two equals two, and x equals x plus one. So x equals was zero. So we add one to that equals one. And the second iteration goes back and it says, okay, well, what's power? Power is now two. Is two not equal to 120? Yeah, still not equal. So that condition is met and says, okay, power, and starts executing that code again within the, within the loop. And it says, okay, well, power equals current value power, which is two times two, and we get four, and x equals x plus one, which is two, and continues, right? So iteration three goes back and says, hey, well, now power is equal to four. Is four not equal to one? Yeah, still not equal. And continues until we finally get to um, 128. Right, so x is going to be equal to seven at that point, and, and it'll say 128 is well power power is not equal to 128. It'll say, oh, hey, it is equal, and I'll finish. It'll be say, oh, now I'm done with that loop. Okay, so let's see how we write this. Well, we first have to initialize some variables that we have here, and so let's just do that. Let's we've chosen some registers, put those in power is in S0 and X is in S1. So we're gonna just take line by line, translate it, and we're gonna initialize that using our add immediate. One's a small constant, so we can do that. S0, 0, 1, and we have same thing for X, add immediate, S1, 0, but now we're initializing it to the value of zero. And, now we'd want to check, well, we want to pop out of this loop if they are equal, right? It doesn't meet that condition. So we're going to do the same or similar thing that we did where we high level code checked the not equals. We're going to check the opposite case. We're going to say branch if equal, and I want to be done with this and get it, you know, go to done. If well, pow is in S0, and we want to do 128. Let me just do that. No, you can't do that. That has to be a register value. And we'll see exactly why when we talk about machine language, that, that has to be a register. So I need to put that in some temporary location. So let's go ahead and put that in um, T0, for example. So we're going to initialize T0, another register, with this temporary value, 128. And now I can use that can't use it immediate there, but I can use another register. Okay, so branch equal S0, T0. So T0 holds the value 128. And if they are equal, I'm done. Right? I don't want to keep doing this while loop. And so we'll go to a label I happen to call done. Okay, and now we're going to keep doing the rest. Power equals power times 2. Easy thing to do here is to say, Okay, well, shift left logical does multiplication by two pretty easily. So shift left logical immediate, because we have an immediate amount, two. How, which is an S0, shifted left by one bit multiplies it by two. And then we have our last thing here x equals x plus one. So add immediate x equals x plus one. And now we want to repeat this. So now we're going to jump back. We have to have somewhere to jump back to. Let's just put a label here. Jump. And I want to check that condition again. Jump to label L1. And so we do, we translate this code line by line. And, you know, we kind of fix things as we go, right? We, we want to put 128, but then realize, oh, can't do that. I can only compare registers, values in registers. And we, you know, as we as we went, we realized, oh, hey, we need a label up here because I need to jump back to that to, to repeat that loop. So we added that label L1 um, as we needed it. And here it is written more nicely. And uh, the label names used in this code are while. So this jumps back to the while label to repeat that loop. 
and done with this thing here. So again, the high-level code tests the opposite case as the uh, assembly code. For loops um, include the initialization in the, the way we describe the for loop. So it has for initialization, which occurs before the loop begins, and then has the condition. This is you know, the same as the while loop. We're checking that condition. While that condition is true, we want to keep executing that the loop, the body of the for statement, of the, of the for loop. And then we perform the statement if that condition is met, or statements, right? It could be a complex statement. And then at the end of each iteration, we perform this loop operation. Usually that's some counter that's counting, hey, I want to do this 100 times. So we have loop operation, and the condition is checking, hey, how many times did you do that? Is it less than 100? Um, and so forth. OK, so uh, let's do an example of, of the for loop. Here is um, some C code, some high level code that's adding the numbers from 0 to 9. So we have int sum equals 0, int i, we have a variable dec declaration. And here we have our initialization, i equals 0, right? We could have pulled that out of the, of the for loop like we've done before. And then it would turn into a while loop if we did this while. And then if we put this down here in, in the, um, Right, we put this actually in the body of, of the for loop and made the this, we could turn it into a while loop. But it's such a common um, kind of construct that we've made a, a, a separate um, construct of the for loop for it. So initialization happens before the, um, before the for loop executes at all. Every time, um, every iteration, the condition is checked if it's met. The statement is performed, and finally, at the end, the loop operation is um, is executed. So let's take a look at um, what happens here. We initialize sum to zero, chosen registers for those, sum to zero, and here is i being set to zero. So this is this initialization but it's described in, within the for loop construct. And like we did with the, uh, with the while loop, we create this temporary value or put a temporary value in a register T0 and a temporary register T0 so that we can compare with it in our branch operation. And now we're going to do check the, the condition. If it's met, then we're gonna perform the um, operation. So again, our high level code checked for inequality, i not equal to 10, and now we're going to check for equality. Once it is equal to 10, when, once i is equal to 10, that value in the temporary register t0, then want to be done, jump out of that, or branch out of that, uh, out of that for loop. But if the branch isn't taken, it's going to fall through and perform sum equals sum plus i, and then here is finally our loop operation. I equals, uh, I equals I plus one. And then after it completes that, jumps back and says, okay, condition still met. If it is, keep going here or repeat the, repeat the loop. Here is a less than comparison. So I less than 101. This adds the powers of two from one to 100. So now we have this less than comparison here. And we still have our initialization. We have sum equals zero, i equals one. This is our um, i equals one operation. And we still initialize our temporary um, with the um, constant value that we, we need for comparison. And now we look at our condition. The condition in the high level code is less than, the opposite of that is greater than or equal. So BGE is branch if greater than or equal to. We're gonna say, hey, is i greater than or equal to 101? If it is, I'm done. Otherwise, if that branch isn't taken, 
while I was less than 101 and it completes the loop operations or the statement right? and the loop operation. And so we have sum equals sum plus i. And then in this case, we're multiplying i equals i times 2. And so shift left logical immediate by 1 multiplies i by 2. So i equals i shifted left logical by 1 bit is the same as multiplication by 2. And then jump back, check the condition, and repeat if the condition is met. Otherwise, branch to the done label. And there's more code down here. So here's another version of the less than comparison. So we still have our i less than 101 here. But instead of the branch greater than or equal to instruction, we're going to use set if less than, the SLT instruction. So SLT, T2, S0, T1, or T0, this instruction makes uh, T2 equal to 1 if, and only if, S0 is less than T0. Else, T2 equals 0. And this is the 32-bit representation of 1, so a bunch of zeros and a 1. So in this case, we'll say, okay, set if less than, we want to set T2, this temporary register, temporary calculation, to 1 if S0 is less than T0. So in this first iteration, well, I is going to be, in the first iteration, I is going to be uh, 1. And so 1, I'm going to check, is 1 less than this temporary value, 1, 101? Yeah, it is. And so T2 is going to get set to 1 because 1 is, in fact, less than 101. And so this says, hey, if T2 is equal to 0, then I want to get out of this loop. But in this case, well, T2 is equal to 1 because uh, I was less than 101. And so branch equal 1, 0, it's not going to take the branch because they're not equal. It's going to continue through to uh, through the, the loop body. And then finally, as it gets larger, right, when um, I is not equal to um, to 101, it's not um, less than 101, excuse me. So when i is 128, I'm going to check, is that less than 101? It'll only set T2 if it is less than, but it's not. And so T2 will um, become 0. And it'll say branch equal to 0. Yep, done.